Hello there, it's Melissa Katie, the Challenge Doctor. I'm certain that this is almost a daily occurrence for me when I deal with patients um, in the perioperative uh, area. And I had an experience today with a patient who will remain anonymous, but this is uh, not uncommon. And there are so many times that either, and, and there's always something that we deal with in life as humans. We have certain habits that wreak havoc in our life. And smoking is definitely one that just can destroy so much more than just your lungs. And um, for instance, in the area of doing um, anesthesia and being sedated, it's very common for, for patients who smoke to have denuded or basically lose the little cilia within the trachea and our natural mechanism for bringing all the junk out of our lungs so that we can keep it healthy and have more hyper irritable vocal cords so I get a lot of coughing that can happen with these patients whether we put a breathing tube in or not um, when they start coughing then it can increase the the chances that acid from your stomach can come up and go into your lungs which is not really set up well in someone who's already a smoker with their immune system um, already in a deprived state and so every time someone smokes it's it's transferring into your bloodstream and this is something that so many people don't realize that it actually transfers in carries across all the chemicals uh, not just nicotine but all the chemicals that come in with a cigarette and actually get transferred to every single cell in your body and it's almost this um, either people don't care or they're just having so much stress that this is their only coping uh, mechanism or habit they've created to deal with boredom, stress, um, loneliness, uh, whatever it is. And so when people are smoking, not just once in their life or a year in their life, but year after year after year and keep pummeling and pummeling the most amazing machine that's ever been created, our human body, you basically diminish the blood flow and carry inflammatory chemicals to the entire body. So we see people that tend to lose their teeth um, earlier in life and actually lose all their teeth end up with dentures early in their life. Um, the tiny little capillaries that feed the teeth are not getting the type of good blood supply and oxygen um, to those teeth. There's people that they are up in the, the ranks of someone who's a diabetic as far as losing uh, limbs because of poor uh, blood flow, secondary to atherosclerosis, which is an inflammatory type of process that comes from the smoking individual and uh, more prone to infections. Um, you have people that get onychomycosis or the fungal infections of the fingernails have a real hard time eradicating uh, or just more prone to getting those kinds of problems. You'll see spooning or clubbing of the fingernails. Um, again, poor blood flow and oxygen delivery. And there are people that get um, all types of cancers. Obviously people think lung cancer, but it's not just lung cancer. There are people that are set up for more pneumonias. I get so many times, I get people that come in and have constant like upper respiratory infections. Um, a cough, even a cough is denied by many times where they don't want to admit it, that they have this predisposition for these problems uh, because they're constantly, constantly as they're getting older, giving all these stresses. And of course, we're not as resilient as we get older, um, especially if we're doing all these things to our body. So. I had a real serious conversation with this individual, made them listen to my lungs and their lungs, and there was a significant difference in how mine sounded, um, and even did breathing treatment to let them see what it, what it uh, was like afterwards, and actually you could hear the, the horrible sounds in their lungs even worse, because they finally opened up those lung and those airways. So I had a conversation about not only the cost and these technicalities, because nobody really wants to hear all this, nobody wants to be preached to, and I get that. But there are some really good ways of, of thinking about your life and the stress you're under and the things that, you know, you never have a habit unless you start it um, doing it once. Obviously, you won't have a habit if you didn't make the choice to do it in the first place. But what sinks it in and what keeps it as a habit, you have to really evaluate what you're doing in response to the feelings you're having and or the stress that you're under. So there is a moment where it's just this pathway that's now been become a habit. You don't even think about it. But there's something that triggers within you that makes you reach for that cigarette. And some people just say they like it. Um, but with all the risks of downstream, of having trouble breathing, the quality of life, you looking a lot older, 
losing your teeth. Um, there's a lot of other things that go on in multiple areas of your body, including high blood pressure. I can't believe how many people don't realize the high risk factor for high blood pressure from a lifetime of smoking. Um, just the atherosclerotic vessels and the predisposition for that. So having a conversation with this patient was um, really important for the family and also for, for him and her to realize that this is something that they need to evaluate what are the triggers and what is it they're really trying to cope with and then find something else that's a healthier way of coping. So I don't know how many people are going to watch this video. I just feel like I had to put that out there because I think it's totally underestimated how insidious this process is. And some people can get away with abusing their bodies more than others. But we see so many problems and issues in the medical field from a lifetime of smoking. And the beauty is if you quit, you can actually have some recovery of function of your lungs. The cilia can grow back. You have better immune function. All this other problems that you can stagnate or slightly improve. But the longer and longer you go, the less resilient you are going to be at recovery. So I encourage you. It's not to shame you. It's to maybe inspire you in a way to think about things differently and maybe reevaluate your life as to why you keep pummeling your body with chemicals of smoking cigarettes. And I wish for you, um, whether you find a book uh, like The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg, um, why humans do what they do. It's an incredible book. Um, really makes you think story after story, why we do what we do and how to reevaluate that space, that empty space where you can have more insight as to why you're doing what you're doing. And uh, change isn't easy, but I always encourage you to challenge your health before your health challenges you. And cigarettes are definitely one of those things that will challenge your health later in life. The pain of quitting and changing now will not be nearly the kind of pain later with the problems that manifest from that habit over your lifetime. So I encourage you to quit smoking <laughs> and um, find a way to inspire yourself, keep yourself accountable, find some support, and I wish you um, the best. Until next time, take care.